Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, today I'll be talking about model driven apps in particular, um, how to create complex business conditions um, for complex branching in BPFs. So I've got a scenario where um, I've got a fundraising table and um, I'm saying that if a fundraising event costs more than 5k to host or if I'm hosting it outside of my local city, um, if any one of this is true, and if the event is uh, promoted by a local news channel, um, in that case, I'll say it's a complex fundraiser. Otherwise, I'll say it's a simple fundraiser. So I've got a BPF here, which um, says that's a condition. And then obviously, if it's if the condition is met, it's a complex fundraising event. Otherwise, it's a simple fundraising event. Um, the thing with the default or the BPF designer is that you can't have um, uh, multiple conditions. You can only have like, you know, you might have two condition, two rules, um, but they're all set to be or or and. Um, I can add another rule, but all of these three rules needs to be or or an and. And it's quite difficult sometimes to create a logic uh, based on just or and and. Um, so in this case, what um, I have done is. Um, use JavaScript to apply this um, complex conditioning. Um, for my condition in the BPF, I only have a field, which is um, a choice field with the value of yes or no. And if it's yes, I say it's a complex condition. Otherwise, I say it's a simple condition. OK. So if you go to our VS Code, um, the first thing you would need to do is write a code for onload because that's when um, everything will start. You need to pass in the execution context. You get the execution context and then this is just a boilerplate um, function that will wait for the XRM object to be loaded on the website. Um, if it's not loaded, you basically set a timeout. You call it again after every two, 200 milliseconds. It's just going to keep looping until it gets the XRM um, object. So once you get the object, you can then add a listener to all your fields that um, are required for the complex um, business logic. OK, so I've got three fields that I need to worry about. So first one is the location um, of the event. Second one is the cost of the event. And third one is whether or not um, the event is being promoted by a news channel. So I have created constants um, here for um, the field um, logical names. And then I will add listeners to each of them. Um, to make life easier, I, I've created a loop where I'm looking through each of these names. And I'm adding um, an event uh, listener function, which is called check uh, BPF logic. So what am I doing in the BPF logic? Um, quite simple. If you know JavaScript, it's um, actually extremely simple. Um, I'm getting from the XRM object, I'm getting the value of location field, getting the value of cost, and whether it's being promoted or not. After that, I'm just putting the logic using JavaScript. So um, if my cost value is greater than 5k, or if my um, location is outside um, my local city, then um, this is true. And then if my uh, promote is if the event is being promoted, then um, it's set to yes. Um, one thing to note here is that the location value, obviously, you have to um, sort of get the um, the choice the choice field here, which is going to be this one location type and uh, if I look at the values I'll see local city is um, one twenty six forty eight um, and outside local city is one twenty six forty eight zero 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 one um, so that's the value that basically I'm checking for over here. And if this is true, then from the XRM object, I'm getting um, the field which actually in my BPF um, 
which my BPF is based on. So I'm getting the field over here, and then I'm saying um, set the value to yes. And again, this yes is um, whatever you know value you have in your choice object. Um, if this is false, then I'm setting the value to no. So once you've done that, you need to make sure that you've um, triggered the on fire event because otherwise you would be changing your value um, in your BPF uh, field. However, it's not going to actually show the BPF um, branching. Okay, so once you've done that, all you need to do is go into web resource, you would come in here, and then you would sort of upload your um, BPF, which I have here, BPF complex branching. And once that's loaded, um, you'll see that if I change this to local city, um, my BPF changed. And if I change it back to local city, my BPF changed. If I say if the event is not promoted, it's a simple event. If it's promoted, it's, um, it's a complex event. Now, another thing to, I guess, look at is you might want to lock this um, is complex fundraising field. The reason is um, I can just come in and I can say yes or no, right? So if this is locked, I won't be able to do it. Um, okay, so how do you implement that? So if you come back to our code, um, I had this commented out, but basically if I uncomment this, um, before I run the add event listener, um, I, you know, it doesn't matter which order you run it, but I'm running it at the top. I'm locking down my field. So if I go into this function, you'll see that I'm getting um, my logical name of my is complex uh, field, and I'm attaching this uh, suffix, this prefix, which is header underscore process underscore uh, the logical name. And after that, it's very simple. Um, I'm getting from my form context, which is, you know, from the execution context I got over here. I'm using that object to get um, the BPF control field, and then I'm setting it to, and I'm disabling it basically. Um, so this field here is basically disabling this field here. Okay, so you might be wondering where I got from where I got this header underscore process underscore from. So if I go back to my um, BPF, um, if I click on this stage one, and if I right click on the field that I want to lock, it's going to open up. And basically, with on this field, you want to look for the data dash ID um, attribute. So if I double click here, you'd see that this header underscore process underscore and and this is where my logical name of the field starts sk underscore is complex fundraising um, just go up to that dot and that's the logical name of this um, field in bpf so if you want to enable or disable this field here you need to um, use this name here header underscore process underscore whatever the name is Awesome. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, all the code is on my blog, so go check it out. The link will be in the description below.